Steve has done a phenomenal job for us, and I did want to start by saying thank you to those who participated in the NCD, or Natural Church Development Process. Uh, we had 35 church leaders. Some of you weren't part of that initial group, but don't worry, we will be doing it again, and you may get an invitation. Uh, none of the uh, church employees or staff of St. Paul's was included. We took uh, 35 lay leaders who are part of small groups and so on. And I wanted to say thank you to each of you from the three services uh, and different age ranges and so on, representing the diversity of our congregation uh, for your time and effort. And we thought this morning we would briefly present to you some of the results. And um, I was very encouraged to, to see what they are. Uh, not because they give us a snapshot of our congregation and they give us some pointers and directions so that we can grow and become even more effective in witnessing for the love of Christ. Steve. Uh, thank you. Um, as some of you may know, I'm, uh, uh, my day job is in education. And so it wouldn't be an educational presentation unless I had a significant number of uh, uh, code words. NCD, as, as Kim had mentioned, it's Natural Church Development and SPOTH, St. Paul's on the Hill. So for those of you who are new, SPOTH means St. Paul's on the Hill. That's part of my, my uh, uh, appeal to welcoming people so we don't have too many acronyms. This is Vestry Sunday, and as Kim had mentioned, this is an opportunity for a business meeting, but I think business should really be spelled as worship. Worship in thankfulness for what God has done this past year, and a reflection or preflection, if you will, into the year ahead. Let's see if this works. Nice. Okay. What is NCD or natural church development? Natural church development is just that. It's natural. It was a process that was uh, reviewed by the wardens and by uh, Ken and Kim and was deemed to be a good tool that could be used by the church to assess or evaluate the effectiveness of ministry and the quality, uh, some of the qualities of our church. So the focus is, in fact, on quality. The goals that we set, sometimes termed an action plan, are really to serve this growth in quality. It's not about quantity, the 800 people who may be in the church, but really it's about the quality first and the quantity of people will come. When, as the community and this fellowship is more attractive. Sometimes church can look like this. Too few, few people doing the work. One person at the front pulling doesn't even know the other person is pushing from the back. And there's a bit of a problem. The wheels are square. NCD helps us to get a glimpse of what some of those square wheels might be. Also, if you look at the wagon, what's inside? The solution. That's right. So within the congregation is, in fact, the solution to some of the barriers, if you will, to church growth. NCD is not a program that gets applied uh, to the church. It's not read this book, do these five steps, and follow what's happened in some other church. In fact, it's a survey that asks questions of the congregation and says, what is it that's going on here? What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? What are the areas that you need to grow in? Just like going to see the doctor. An athlete can be in fine shape, but if their cholesterol is too high, it would help to know about that. So how do we get rid of those? We get rid of those by reflecting on uh, a couple of things. First of all, uh, empirical research. NCD, from a background standpoint, was first conducted in about 1,000 congregations in 32 countries around the world. And this is what formed the basis of the survey that we did um, earlier in the fall. 
It had since grown to uh, 45,000 congregations in 70 countries and six continents. And uh, now we're up to over 80,000 uh, churches and surveys that have been done. So we are part of that data set. So what this um, empirical research showed us what was that the best possible conditions for growth uh, involve these eight characteristics. All churches, all church communities have these eight characteristics. What NCD does is it actually measures how much or the quality of each. And the quality in the first case is defined by the adjective here. How empowering is the leadership? All churches will have ministries, but how gift-oriented are those ministries? Do the ministries that you're engaged in align with your giftings? All churches will have spirituality, but how passionate are we in our spirituality? And passion looks different for each one of us, but I think each of us would know the degree to which our spirituality is, in fact, passionate. Others are how effective are our structures, in how inspiring the worship, how holistic are the small groups, how need-oriented is the evangelism, and how loving are the relationships within the church. It's the adjective that is key, the adjective that is being measured. So the survey gets done by, as Kim had said, 35 folks in the congregation, all of whom had to meet certain criteria. Criteria being active, um, regularly attending, members of some kind of small group in a way that they would be able to answer questions pertaining to small groups. One of the images that is uh, presented back to us is our congregation can be envisaged as this bucket. The bucket can only hold so much water. It has a capacity. Each one of the quality characteristics that we've identified could be represented as staves in that bucket. But you see one of them is the short stave. One of them will always be shorter than the others, no matter how tall or large the bucket is. So once we have information on what that short stave, that minimum factor, then the, uh, the board, the wardens, leadership within the congregation can say, okay, is there something we can do that will address that minimum factor? Another analogy is a potted plant. For those of you who like to garden in the winter time, this is about the only way we can do that. A plant requires four different things at minimum, the size of the pot, they need nutrients, water, and they need a good location. The plant, when planted, will grow and thrive until it becomes limited by one of these factors. In this case, it had enough water initially and nutrients, but it seems to have met a block. If we add water, it can now grow some more. If we add more water, it really doesn't solve anything. But what we need to do, in fact, is to repot the plant. So as we do one survey and we get information on what uh, an area of growth may need be, another survey down the road might find that there's a new limiting factor. So it's not something we do once and stop, it's something that we do regularly. Because we, as a congregation, just like that living plant, is in fact a living thing. We are Christ's body. So the minimum factor approach very quickly is to take a look at the data, take a look at what our strengths are, and then apply those strengths to what area of need we have. So our initial data showed that we have an average of 70.4, so you'll have the numbers, and a min-max difference of 9.4. Isn't that exciting? It's far too small at the top, so I just made it a little bigger at the bottom. Our minimum factor was inspiring worship service. Dead silence. <laughs> and, and our greatest or highest maximum factor was holistic small groups. Well, what does that inspiring worship service actually mean? Well, we took an opportunity to take a look and unpack some of the answers that went into that particular uh, stave, if you will. And I must say that the worship music 
um, was uh, something that was very highly regarded. But what in our service still did people feel need improvement to make it more inspiring? Well, we'll hear a little bit more about that later. So this, these are our results. I don't know if you can see all the numbers. It's really not the point. There will, they will be in the vestry book, or they already are. But 50% um, of the churches lie below that dotted line in the middle. For those of you interested in statistics and understand normal curves, you'll realize that within the um, uh, two standard deviation, or within a standard deviation above and below of the midpoint, you get 68%. So actually, having an average of 70 doesn't really mean that we're, we're at 70. We're, in fact, in very, very good shape. This points to a very healthy congregation. You can also see that our minimum and maximum difference is very, very small. It's very level, almost boring. This is good. This, this points to a great deal of stability and capacity within. It means that we're not wonky and out of shape. But what do we need to do? Well, let's take a look at some of these results. What comes more naturally to us over here on the, uh, uh, I don't even know what side it will be, right-hand side of your screen or left-hand side of your screen? Fellowship is something that comes most naturally to us. Two things that come in order of service and then finally faith. Here's a, another image that shows, if you see the dotted, gray dotted line, that shows our church in perfect balance. You'll notice the yellow line that almost covers it up shows where we are. We're slightly leaning towards an affinity towards fellowship and an affinity towards service with faith being an area that we've sort of slid a little bit away from. Now, I must say, um, from all of the church NCD surveys that I've done, because I volunteer with the diocese and I do NCD surveys in a number of churches, um, I've probably done about 15 or 16 churches. That's the most balanced I've ever seen. This is a good thing. So we have eight quality characteristics. Something's got to be on the bottom, so let's take a look. Holistic small groups. Now, I know they spelled it with an H there. I really don't believe it should be an H. Shouldn't it be a W? To be whole. Like, otherwise, holistic small group sounds like somebody should be missing. Yeah. Um, effective structures and inspiring worship were our two lower staves. And again, you'll see the yellow dotted line, or the yellow line there shows a great deal of balance. So these are the bars. And so when we were taking a look at what is an action plan that we could engage in, what steps could we take as a congregation to reflect on this data and really intentionally think about integrating ministry and answering, I guess, our areas of need. Passionate spirituality, effective structures, and inspiring worship were our lower ones. Well, again, there wasn't a whole lot of difference there, and so we did some subsequent analysis, and there are a number of themes. You'll see the top theme, intimacy, pastoral care, and affirmation are the things that we are the best at. We affirm one another, we care for one another, and we in our small groups have no difficulty telling our story to one another. But what we did find was an area of need was the relevance of our faith to our everyday life. That was something we needed to reflect on. Self-awareness, our position in Christ. How aware are we in our daily life of our position in Christ? And finally, vision. What is the vision we have collectively? There were some animated discussions, you can imagine. As Kim has mentioned on some occasions, we are a program-sized church, which means we have about 350 people walking through these doors every Sunday morning. 
This is one of the largest churches. I think it's the largest church in the area, isn't it? In the Durham region. Um, I had been asked to put together a, um, an org chart for some of the ministries. As you can see, you can't read any of that. There's too much. Well, maybe not too much, but there's so much that sometimes the vision of one group may be quite different from the vision of another. And if we're so busy doing, then maybe we've not connecting with one another as much as we could. So these were some of the, the things that the, uh, the factors that went into the action plan. So communicating vision. One of the key emphases was to build a wider understanding of the various ministries and their respective missions. Encouraging each other to be able to tell our ministry story. We can tell our faith story, but can we tell our ministry story? I'm engaged in the food bank. Why? I'm engaged in putting together backpacks for the homeless. Why is that? Are we telling our story within the church, but are, are we also telling our story to the wider community? Relevant worship. One of the discussions that's maybe already apparent to you is that we mix up our service a fair bit. The nine o'clock service is different from the 11, it's different from the 745. We have different preachers, different worship bands. We have a choir. We have slightly different liturgies. But there was a desire from the congregation to see more flexibility in different sermon formats. Maybe a sermon series, not just the lectionary. Maybe a greater emphasis on discipleship. Another part of our action plan is to build a congregation-wide sense of being a part of the larger family of Christ, part of a wider communion. The object will be to help us understand and feel that we are indeed worthy to sit at the table. This is a term that was taken from the, well, the Red Book, Book of Common Prayer. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, Lord, we're not worthy to gather up the crumbs under your table? Actually, that's not true. We are made worthy in Christ. Without Christ, we're not worthy to even be in a room. But in Christ, we are welcomed to sit at the table. So let us live God's call on our lives. But we can only live that call if we feel worthy to sit at the table. How can we build that sense into our lives this year? I'll let you do this one. <laughs> <laughs> one of the uh, things people uh, highlighted was to revise the order of service to create more opportunities for prayer and quiet reflection. Now, uh, one of the challenges for us, of course, is some people actually wanted more uh, music, more action happening, and other people found quietness and reflection uh, to be helpful. And of course, this mirrors uh, opinion in all three services. Uh, so we try to find a balance, uh, recognizing that we have different personalities and approaches to worship. So again, a number of the elements of the action plan are directed to all of us as congregants, but also to um, worship leadership in terms of coordinating what goes on. Will there be enough time for that quiet reflection? When you come in and you wish to just pray, will you have that space? Is there during the intercession time an opportunity to intercede a little more? Or that quiet space where you can say, you know what, i just like that to be a little bit longer. I have a little more to pray about. The welcome ministry. How welcoming are we to the community? So one of the things that had been identified in that org chart was sometimes the points of contact for new people to the congregation, visitors to the congregation, um, 
aren't as clear. So how can we be more intentional about arranging um, f drivers for newcomers? How can we be more intentional, intentional about making sure that newcomers are visited, have their needs met? <coughs> can we revise some of the things that we already do quite well, but maybe integrate some of the ministry leaders in there so that somebody new to the congregation is actually introduced to somebody who's engaged in overseas missions, backpacks, Christmas hamper ministries. And then also to have leaders of various ministries meet with Ken and Kim on a scheduled basis to be able to review their ministries, to, have, uh, to evaluate the successes in their ministries. Again, to reconfirm that common sense of communication, but also mission. So also to work with ministry leaders to develop goals and to evaluate success in those ministries. How well are we doing? So many people are doing, but sometimes there isn't that feedback, including feedback that says, help. I could use some help here. So part of the action plan will be to intentionally support leaders from clergy leadership to build those, that time in. So one of, unfortunately, one of the, um, the pieces of feedback that the uh, 35 survey members gave us was that uh, uh, Ken and Kim doesn't have very much time. He's too busy. Unfortunately, the action plan includes some items that may make him even more busy. So, <laughs> so hopefully we'll be able to find the balance in that. The most important piece, though, isn't the written down action plan, which again you'll find in your vestry book, but your personal action plan. Each one of us can find a place where we can engage in some aspect of ministry. Can we realize our ministry calling? What is that calling? And how does it fit into that action plan? Greater interconnectedness. The, um, one of the themes in Lent is personal reflection. I think the term discipline, a spiritual discipline was even applied. Maybe this is something during Lent that we can reflect upon. What will be my action plan? At the end of my 40 days, how will the ministry that I'm engaged in be done differently? Not more, not additional, just differently. Amen. Steve, thank you. Um, if I can just briefly sum up um, the NCD process for us. It showed us that we're an extremely healthy and well-balanced congregation, that we are positioned to grow as we head into the future, and that we have all of the elements for very successful ministry. Um, and so this is really a celebration of where we are as a community. Uh, but it also points out to us areas for growth and development uh, designed to encourage us, not discourage, but encourage. And so um, even when you look, look and see 70%, that is actually an extremely good result. Um, just to give you an idea, my daughter just finished at uh, Oxford not so long ago. 70% uh, on a doctoral thesis at, at, um, at Oxford is an extremely good result. 66 is phenomenal, 70% is good. So you need to think of it in those terms. 100% uh, is uh, probably impossible. Um, so uh, because we're made up of a whole group of people with various skills and so on. So I want you to be encouraged by this. God is doing great things amongst us. Uh, but this gives us some focus on how we can pray and uh, do some uh, work uh, to make us even more uh, useful and attractive as we reach out uh, to the wider community. Thank you, Steve, for that presentation. <laughs>